Welcome to Welcome. Shop Talk episode. Who knows what? We're beyond 35, so now we're officially yeah, the, pros. Yeah, as you see, the, the <laughs> audio is good. Um, is the audio good? The audio is going to be good. We trust. Well, Brigham just snuck out of here. Like, if he could walk across the camera and you still wouldn't see him because he's below it. But he's the one who dialed us all up. So if, if anything's bad, we blame Brig. Right? Every time. Every time. That's kind of what we're doing. So as you can see, we have upgraded Lance a few times on these podcasts. Now this is AJ Jorgensen, Andres Jota, right? Howdy, howdy. <laughs> so he's here from the great state of Idaho, um, up north, one hour and 37 minutes past the border. There's a town called Idaho Falls. Where the uh, creeks turn into cricks and... And salmon flies the turn into turn trout into flies. Cheeks. Yep, and they're yeah. now called trout flies. <laughs> so tell tell us uh, what's going on, Mr. AJ. So uh, come down, do some podcasting, introduce myself, uh, do some tutorials, so you guys will start seeing some flies of mine on the videos, and just slaving away, making making things happen up north. Yeah, absolutely. So AJ's our assistant manager up at the Jimmy store. Um, like expert fly tire. Um, so we're, we're making him earn his keep by making him film flies. Transferring him back and forth between locations. Yeah. If you didn't know, we have a location in Idaho Falls. Yeah. It's called Fly Fish Food Jimmy's. Formerly known as Jimmy's All Seasons Angler. JASA. JASA. If you will. Not, right? Not NASA. Not NASA. So, um, but when you just say Jimmy's, though, everybody, everybody knows, knows exactly yeah. what you're talking been about. Up there, yeah. So, it's, so it's good. in regards to old AJ, how'd you get into fly fishing? I started back when I was 12. My dad had a, a boss that he worked for that had talked me into tying flies for him. So, I tied flies for numbers of years commercially before I even got my driver's license. Um, How good were those flies, though? I don't know. The, <laughs> they looked they, good at the time. I don't know if they caught more branches or fish. You'd have to ask Bert. Yeah. But, um, so I got started off tying flies super young. Uh, grew up in the Boulder County area just outside of, you know, Estes Park, Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, so, which of the that's South in Colorado? Park, yeah, which of the South Park <laughs> characters you most relate with? Oh, I think I'm kind of a Butters guy. I You're got, Butters. Got nothing but happy feelings and, <laughs> yes. and good good vibes. Nobody's gonna say Butters. Yeah, but he he's just like the happy one, right? Oh yeah. So it's, I've learned working with these Coloradoans, you got to relate a lot of stuff to South Park to really get it to, to sing. Yeah, in. Colorado. We we oh, the only the only two things we know is green chili and South Park, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. trout. I don't even know if it makes it on the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, green chili is a euphemism for weed. Yes, we were for weed. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Yeah, because Colorado is a little blazy now. But sorry, I cut you off. That's what I do. I, I interrupt. So you have to keep your train right, of thought. I didn't keep I talking. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so started with tying flies mostly. Grew up in the Front Range, of Colorado. Uh, met my wife in high school. Moved up to Glenwood Springs in the Roaring Fork Valley, and that's when I realized, like, oh man, fly fishing is king up here. Um, went into a fly shop and was like, hey, I want to start dabbling into this fly fishing game. And the guy said, cool, you're going to want to get pheasant tails. And I said, well, sorry, dude. I got like a hundred dozen of those back home that I, 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 I know how to tie them. So long story short, made a lot of eye rolls, people going, oh, you know how to tie flies, but never fly fish. So that's my <laughs> yeah. focus is I really like tying flies. Uh, my favorite way to fish is probably ice fishing. A lot yeah. more, a lot more hangout, chit chat, and <laughs> a little bit more of a, but more of a vibe than I, hardcore fly guys. We we uh, we fish with old AJ, but yeah, I mean, we we have a, a mantra: catch a fish by any means possible. <laughs> but no know, shame uh, angling. Yeah. So, but no, AJ's. You've been how many years did you guide? So or, I guided for just two seasons on the South Fork. Um, mm -hmm. But with those two seasons, I put in over two hundred and eighty days. Yeah. Um, so 
big strong shoulders. My calluses are still <laughs> yeah. on You're my hands. You're getting that soft like, shop life to my, come in. They're barely falling <laughs> off now, but um, so not a lot of guiding. But I mean, for the last eight years, I've been on the South Fork religiously rowing shoveling water for either fa friends and family or these two guys <laughs> yeah. or for cash for for some guiding stuff okay. um, which by the time day. this comes out our video with aj should be released search it up on our youtube channel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely oh yeah because we it's did a good that one. salmon fly yeah. day right we did some salmon fly days but amongst the salmon flies we also euro nymphed from the boat um, so the how did that go you're gonna have to check that out there's cause... a montage in the video i watched did you watch it no I didn't. yeah it's sped up fast because you caught because you're never like, cast boom dunk, boom dunk, boom dunk. yeah don't, AJ you don't looks have to over. tell everybody you do it, but we'll show you how it works and how to get it done if you want to go catch a ton. My favorite thing for the Idaho guys are like, do you guys sell Duracells? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I said, so how long have you been a Euro nymph for? He's like, I don't Euro nymph. I'm like, well, yes, you are. That's a Euro nymph, and you're using it. That's so, not even fly fishing. That's not even fly fishing. It's dangling, not angling. Yeah. So, yeah, we've uh, Curtis and I went and fished with AJ. Um, we had to do a reference check after he was already hired to make sure he knew what he was doing. So, yeah, we went and smoked a bunch of fish on the on the South Fork, which I think is my favorite river in the West right now. Like, I freaking love that place. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't think I could even if... if it's if, amazing. If yeah, I got river, back into guiding, I don't think I could guide anywhere else other than yeah. on the South Fork. It's the fish are awesome. The scenes are great. Great and bugs. The, it changes. There's tons of hatches. The fish aren't picky. They're just, it's a good place to go. Willing Wreck some fish. Find some little bit of peace and For reference, so the people, for people that don't know, where is the South Fork? The South Fork of the Snake is considered, what would you say, eastern Idaho. Um, starts over in Wyoming, comes out of Jackson Lake, heads through Jackson, and they, for some reason, they like to just call it the Snake. But then once it goes through Palisades Reservoir across the border into Idaho, then that's where we claim it as the South Fork. Mm -hmm. uh, 50 plus miles of South Fork fishing down to the town of Manan. And that's where the Henry's Fork dumps into it. And the or as the locals begins. call it, the North the Fork. North Fork. The North Fork, okay. if you're an yeah. old timer or you can't read a map. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll put you in the protection services. Let's go fish trout flies on the North Fork. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, they only call them trout flies on the South Fork, so as I've heard, right? It's, yeah, it's it's weird. That is kind of weird. Three names for everything: what's on the map, what the locals call it, and then what it actually says on the sign. So <laughs> yeah, you make you get to pick and choose. A lot of nicknames. Yeah. So um, AJ started with us right at the end of May because we were in the middle of the the process Transition. at Jimmy's. Um, Madison Losey is the store manager and AJ's assistant manager. And then we have two knuckleheads named Henry and, and, uh, Hunter that put a lot of stuff together. So they did a bunch of the crap work, but they knew what they were signing up for. But we basically took Jimmy's that, you know, we wanted to kind of standardize the merchandising. So we kind of ripped everything down, rebuilt it, and we're slowly stocking that store up North. So. AJ's AJ's job has looked more like a, a maintenance guy than a than a fly shop employee lately. Yeah, well, and then we've had Cheech up there a bunch too. So I've been a janitor following Cheech's crumb trail around. So <laughs> yeah. if you you guys will did notice, did he ever leave soda cans around? Oh yeah, we're still cleaning those up. Um, <laughs> That's how I fuel this system. Once you get about halfway done and it gets warm, you just your brain just disassociates itself with that soda. <laughs> those wounded soldiers just stay behind. Yeah, so we're we're gonna make a jungle juice for him and start just collecting them all and save them for the the Christmas party or something. Yeah. <laughs> make make me drink it or something. Goodness gracious! No, I never do that. But it's been a lot of fun, um, lots of work, tons and tons of screw guns and nails and hammers and stuff going, putting things together. Uh, the coolest stuff we've got are fly bins, custom made. Ooh, yeah. under lit cabinets and stuff like that so you can see all your flies and a brand new front desk and which doesn't new... seem like a big deal for most people in the in the wild world out there but for us goodness gracious yeah that's it's a game changer. it's a masterpiece yeah, if you haven't been so. into jimmy's in a while 
take a take a look in there. I mean, Jimmy did a great job. Um, we're just kind of matching it to our style and product mix, which is uh, a little different than most. Uh, but you will find more flies and way more fly tying material in there than you have before. And relative to most shops, I'd say we're one of the bigger ones in the area for fly selection and fly tying for sure. Yeah, I think uh, AJ and I were, were the two mules that got to put all of the flies in their spaces. And we, we calculated, what, 4,500 different fly yeah. patterns all in there. So yeah. what we did is we have fly patterns in our store, but because the hatchers are so much more plentiful up there, we had to make sure we had everything for every hatch. And yeah. so... Um, it's actually cool. Like when, yeah. when I went through them first, started kind of cherry picking based on hatches and you know all the <clears throat> Omqua fulling mill solitude you know they've got mfc yellowstone fly goods like really good hardcore fly uh, companies and they're like i feel if you're going to go up and fish uh that area and based on the hatches you've got salmon flies stone flies green drakes betis pmd i mean the list goes on and on, but it was so fun. Oh, numbers and numbers of variants of all of those, all yeah. of those guys. Like oh, it, it's man. an yeah. unlimited number of hatches and stuff. So, um, so cool. Yeah, yeah. South Fork's nickname's the queen of the dry fly. Um, yeah. Fishing riffles with small PMDs, oh, banging man. banks with big foam bugs. Dang. Mice. I mean, mousing it up. There. Mutant stones. Every once in a while. Uh, you, you might get yourself a big brownie. You never know, but fish uh fish could catch up to over 30 inches on trophy browns uh cutthroats at over two feet don't forget the white fish and then yeah you got your stone the whiteies <laughs> the old white dogs they'll 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 put a bend in the rod for you you can get another a fat yeah. 18 one of those guys so. over and over they will do it yeah no so the south fork is a like phenomenal river but up up there there's the you know just working there I'd get text messages like almost every day, like, hey, dude, can you break out early and fish today? Because we're going to do this or we're going to do that. It's just <laughs> like everywhere, you know, it's it's just awesome fishing everywhere up in Idaho. So I that's, call that the golden circle or the golden triangle. The golden triangle. Of Idaho trout. Falls is literally either at the bottom of it, kind of how, depending on how you measure, but it's so close to yeah, so much good water. You, you, take a, you take a 200 mile radius around Idaho Falls, you've got world-class yeah. fishery I mean, every you direction can't, yeah really. you can't drive outside of idaho falls without crossing a yeah. piece of water yeah. that yeah that so holds awesome. awesome trout so yeah. it's yeah like you said it's kind of the mecca of rocky mountain trout fishing in my mind you yeah. can't can't go wrong very centralized there right right so yeah, I mean uh, the the remodel at Jimmy's we're we're probably I would say about halfway there right now. So we're just kind of easing our way into it. You know, every week we get a little bit more inventory. Um, as you can imagine, placing thirty thousand items is a little expensive. So we're and uh, time consuming and time consuming more than anything. So uh, we're we're thinking like by end of winter next spring we'll have it fully up up and going as we want it to be and it's gonna it's gonna be a different beast next year for sure um we're gonna continue doing uh saturday demos Ooh, yeah, saturday morning time. so we'll make sure we get that into our newsletters and stuff and let you guys know when we're gonna start that up it's usually in um, january but we, with, we don't know yet maybe yeah we'll extras. yeah typically yeah. kind of right around the good old expo season is when we pick that up yeah so right after i go ice fish henry's for a few days <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna come up and do that with you no ice fishing that that's a good time right there um speaking of that like we were we were talking about it like i think every guide that we've talked to you just mentioned what's a funny story and everyone's like oh i got some most of them i can't say in in mixed company but They'll come up with a few. You know what I've, I've realized is that by and large, the guide, the funny guide stories are somehow bathroom related. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't remember. Did we tell Josh? I don't even know if I want to say. Yeah, well, did he say that on the podcast? A certain guy. Yeah. Well, there's a guide that we know. A guy he used to guide. Um, you tell the story. I'll, I'll just start cracking yeah, up. So, guys fishing in the front seat of the boat, and I've heard this happening more than once. Yeah, but. Old uh, nature called, 
and he ran off and he was he had to be he had to fish with his vest on and a net okay so <laughs> yeah it's one of those small <laughs> mesh bags old classic black ones so he goes out there and goes out in the sticks and came back and no no issue so he jumps in the boat and they're rowing away and he's like oh what is this smell he looks up and uh he had a treasure in his net <laughs> so i don't know how that even happens but that's when you just you just burn that boat to the ground it's just like well you take that net and you just destroy that net. The old oh. greasy brown steamers. Hey, brown oh my gosh. So sorry Tricky. that you had to hear that. And if you're driving with your wife in the car, <laughs> listen, wife, my name's Cheech. I'm very sorry that you had to hear this. But while your husband is acting like a normal human being, this is the kind of stuff he talks with his friends about, okay? <laughs> so sorry, not sorry. Anyway. Well, I got a similar story. I guiding on the South Fork and got this guy he brings this wiffle ball bat into the boat with us. And I don't think nothing of it. I don't question too many things. I kind of just let people kind of do their stuff. And uh, so he throws it in the rod rack and I get down about two hours into the float. And he's like, hey, hand me that wiffle ball bat. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And now I hand it to him. And the next thing I, I don't really pay attention, but all I hear is, a, you know, the, the chest waiter zzzz, and my client had a nice three and a half foot yellow funnel to use over the side of my boat while he sat on the south fork so for a tip for all you old guys out there you might just need to go grab an old wiffle ball bat and cut the tip off of it and use you get yourself the old and i thought i was bad for uh, gonna do a tutorial old. on a p tether for a float tube don't, don't do it. There's so many p hacks though. Come on. Potty humor aside, guide stories. So famous people. Famous people. Uh, the classic Lodge at Palisades Creek is where I guided for. So I got to meet uh, Henry Winkler. Get old Henry. The Fawns. Fawns. Yeah, he's a staple uh, for the South Fork, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude's an angler. Yeah. He can yeah. he can rock it on the stick. So um other than that kind of just like your your typical locals neckbeard if you guys don't know who neckbeard, oh, neckbeard is the, yeah. that's uh that's probably the most famous guy i know so <laughs> neckbeard was in the shop and he and i took a picture making sure not to touch beards because <laughs> it would have been the velcro effect so aj is just like he's like dude all right You'll, this will happen to you, but we'll be driving up Yellowstone Highway to go to the, to the Henry's Fork. And if you see a white Toyota with a black camper shell going 20 miles an hour under the speed limit, you need to get over because you will mow him down. Say so it's neckbeard every yeah. time. So <laughs> the next day, literally, we're going out onto the river. I, I think it was that same afternoon. It was that, it was that same afternoon because we, we were talking about what yeah. time we wanted to leave and stuff and neckbeard was just in the shop and he had left and i said hey dude <laughs> yeah. we're gonna catch this guy as we head up to go fish so the henry's we see a white dot ag's like no way there he was 20 <laughs> miles an hour under the speed limit just cruising up there but uh that's the other thing with aj we were we were fishing with madison that night or that night that we flew with madison so no fish all day i'm fishing a dry fly and i bang one into the riffle and aj hasn't said anything for like an hour he's like that's the one right there boom fish comes up eats it <laughs> I'm like, i think I, I think i even gave it the good old like all right that's the drift ready three two and then on one that thing got smoked <laughs> yeah yeah so, so every once in a while i feel like i know something about the south fork you've done it a couple times that's it's a, always changing we're always learning out there that's a good way to make your boss feel good too when you do that and you know the fish comes up and eats it on cue it's like okay we hired the right guy maybe yeah, as you <laughs> float by you throw the fish a pellet yeah exactly good boy, good boy. go back go well, back and make sure that that pellet feeder is still turned on so it comes at four o'clock every day yeah you when you hire people you need to make sure they have skills that are repeatable and so i was disappointed that you weren't able to get it to work completely the next time but it kind of worked again <laughs> yeah they don't all listen but oh, man either either it is hunting hunter or henry but we're still working on oh that. yeah the knuckleheads up north you know it's it's a lot of patience up there no 
honestly, these two kids work their guts out. Like, if you go in and you see the H factory up there, Hunter and Henry, you need to yeah, give them a pat work. on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the hard good working, team. good team up there. I mean. Good stuff. Yeah. Hard working team, the old H and H crew. So, the other thing we need to talk about is fly pattern so we had aj come down he's got some really cool flies that he's been tying for a while and as you know we kind of know some people in the industry so these may or may not end up in a catalog somewhere hint hint but those we we filmed them today um we'll work them into our normal progression of releases but tell us about the bugs you tied today so first one goes along with kind of our topic of discussion is a salmon fly pattern uh one of my favorite patterns to tie um rarely fish with any other salmon fly imitation uh super cool extended body real foamy a lot of poly wings so you call that one the slamming slam and fly the slam and fly like and we saw it in real life you don't need floating for this fly and they eat it yeah, I mean it's no Libby Stone, but you know, no, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it it it's the Southwark I'm version. I'm joking with you. you know need, that you need more. The, it's all about how much foam and poly wing is in there to get the yes. trouty teeth stuck in those flies. <laughs> oh, so there you CDC go. CDC is just not webby enough for me. Right, right. That was um, our big debate on the boat. Anyway, and then uh, and then uh, to pair that guy with a little dropper nymph, um, pretty similar to Lance's thread Frenchie, but just a couple different colors and different materials here and there, but pretty similar ties, super easy, effective. Um, that one's super fun. My daughter helped pick out the colors for that fly. And mm -hmm. before I knew it, it was a really good bug and my top secret bug. So nobody has ever seen it before because it works that good. Oh, there you go. Um, and then and that last one's called, we can tell them the name, right? That one's the Zola bug named Zola after bug. my daughter. So that one's a, that one you'll see no time. And she's and, a wily little firecracker. Yeah. So. Watch out. She'll be on, she'll be put, she'll be shoveling water and guiding on the South fork in no time. <laughs> yeah. Dudes will be requesting for that. Yeah. Spicy tamale to row him down the river she's a wild one yeah and then uh and then last but not least we got the scuba steve sculpin uh named that fly because it was left it on the floor of my fly tying office and stepped on it and had to yell damn you scuba steve <laughs> yeah so that one works super well it's a wool headed sculpin pattern uh not a lot of flash to it does it ride hook point up rides hook point yeah. up uh, it's got a lot of weight in the back, so it has a jackknife trailer kind of retrieve to it. So it gets real swingy, kind of walks the dog along the rock bottom. So Yeah, a lot of movement. I fished trout, it the other day. Trout loved to eat yeah. that thing, no problem. It's a single hook yeah. kind of pattern, so nothing articulated, that three-inch trout snack. Yeah, that's... So. That's a good category. There should be a category of streamer called three inch trout snack. I mean, 80% of your streamers should be there. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's another podcast. Oh. Yeah. What is all going the, on? All the most productive, you know, you might get a big one on the big stuff, but I think three yeah. inches is the right oh, size. You'll still get plenty yeah. of big fish on that. What other, I mean, you, you're you always tying flies. So are there any other flies you've been playing with? Uh. Yeah, I've got some some cool warm water patterns, uh, a crawdad pattern that I've been playing around with, real simple tie. Cool. Uh, that one we'll be doing some tutorials on. You guys will need to get your hands on that stuff. It's cool, easy, nice. and money. So Easy, easy. Other than that, just basic trout bugs, nothing special, just lots of foam and poly wing. Tr foam and poly wing. Is there anything else? Foam and poly wing. Foam that's and poly that's, yeah. yeah. Hackle. Hack, yeah. You got to have hackle. 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 What, yeah. But um, I would, so one thing out of uh, when you're fly, when you're tying flies and fishing them, what, what's a memorable fish or maybe. Who catches all the big fish in your family? Well, my wife does all the big fish. So we, we don't talk about all the all the fish. Have you ever caught remember. a fish as big as Claire's fish? No. No, you have not. <laughs> nope. Oh, oh what's the story nope. on that? I'm, Good job, I'm Claire. Stuck. I hope she's watching this. So my wife, she's got she's got every species of trout. She's 
blown me away in personal bests. So like my personal best brown is about a 27, 28. Hers is a 32. My wow. personal best rainbow is right around 24, 25. Hers is 29. <laughs> yeah, she my sticks big fish. First, first trip down to Reno with her to Pyramid Lake. She makes a... I fished for about 30 minutes, said, hey, let's swap. You can fish this ladder. Uh, first cast, 36 incher, probably 15 to 18 pounds. And I, I mean, I, I don't, I think the closest I've got is like a 10 pounder, which is still great. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, sh shatter is my personal best. Every, <laughs> Every one time. of them. So um, if you look on my Instagram page, uh, tell all, them what all, it is. Bug nasty flies. Bug nasty flies. Um, all those big gnarly fish. Pr my pretty much my wife did the work to get those in. I <laughs> I just I just rode the boat and tied knots for her. So she's she's the angler. What's that? What's that? I'm just the What's I'm that? just the it's, grunt. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought so too. It's a bunch. Of all right, I'll tell him. Yeah, AJ. Unfortunately, our uh, lie detector went off there. Oh. And we, she just we wanted can't to make out it. with you. <laughs> no, one thing that we forgot to talk about too is you worked for Rio Fly Lines for, for uh, a while. Yes. So like you made I, fly lines. I know pretty much everything that goes into making a fly line. So if you got any questions about tapers, construction, materials and all that kind of good stuff i i know more than anybody else should about <laughs> making fly lines in the industry so there's only i can only name like a handful of people that i would truly say know more and better about fly lines than myself <laughs> yeah, so you, you were like a shift lead over a like a an area like yeah I, we went and did a tour there we'll re release that video sometime in the next century but <laughs> Um, it was amazing what went on to make a fly line. So you were you were kind of running a crew of of that. Yeah, I was the the lead of an operator on third shift. So anything that went wrong and went bad, it all fell back onto me. So I pretty much was the Brigham at Rio. Yeah. <laughs> Funny um, thing is, we had a guy come in today. He's like, "Yeah, I need a fly line where the tip won't sink down for me." I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to take care of Uncle Chris Walker at Rio. He's one of their." Uh, their main line designers. And he explained to us that, you know, the, the physics of the fly line will not allow it to sink because there are micro balloons in, in the tips of these fly lines. So a lot of people say, well, if, if you absorb water through the core of the fly line, it will make it sink. And it, that's not true because there's so much buoyancy displacing that. So um, like we suspect, it's all due to poor casting and poor mending. So line well, management. Horribly damaged and dirty line oh yeah yeah that's the other thing is line, line oh, care um people roll their eyes and scoff at me when they ask well what's the average lifespan of a fly line well with guiding and working at rio if you can truthfully get 40 days and we're talking eight hour days 40 days out of a fly line you won that's 130 dollar fly line for for 40 days that's cheaper than a liter um, yeah. If you, you yeah. know, just break down the simple math, but 40 days, people look at you like you're crazy. Well, when you actually break it down you say, okay, well, how many days a year do you go fishing? Well, yeah. every other weekend I go out. Well, okay. There's 30 days, you know, roughly yeah. 50 weekends in a year, every other weekend, that's only 30 and that's all year. So you break that down over two seasons, about two summers. If you can get yeah. two summers out of a fly line, you won. Yeah. So. Yeah. And th the other thing is you got to care for that line. It depends on whether it's stepped on or whether you let it coiled in the rocks and everything. And I was talking to Rio guys like old Chris and Wayne over there. And they, they were saying, you know, we, we make the ultimate fly line for a bunch of different presentations. So if you have a real techie fly line you need, that's where Rio comes in. Um, and man, I've been fishing more more of those lines this year after talking to them about kind of the methodology behind it. And, and I found some really cool lines through it. Like that technical trout on an eight and a half foot four weight. Banger. Money, even in the wind. Like I, yeah. I told Curtis about it and he's like, oh, that's weird. And then he took it out and fished it. And what do you think of it? Super good. Man. Yeah. Well, and then my everyone asks like, what's your favorite fly line? Um, mine's the Rio Perception. Um, 
it's a dry fly first, small nymphing, small indicator second kind of fly line. But I mean, you want a fly line that I think does it all. I think the Rio perception is my, my go-to for that five weight category of the most universal. So Rio right. golds are great, but there's, like you yeah. said, there's a ton more tapers out there that oh, yeah. Rio has that. Yeah. yeah. And I think in general, that's one thing that, uh, speaking of life of uh, fly lines, the, obviously the more you pay, technically you're getting more life out of it, but also you don't even touch those specialty tapers until you're up in the, exactly. the, the higher end, which is a, a reason in and of itself to spend the extra money. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, a fly line is so pivotal to your fishing. I mean, yeah, I mean, know, don't, that's, if you're going to skimp on something, that's don't the, skimp on the reel maybe. Well, when people ask like, well, I want to upgrade my setup. My first suggestion is, is, well, have you upgraded your line? Have you, yeah, have yeah. you, have you gone to the most technical, most advanced type of fly line? Cause once, you know, that's where yeah. you, you notice the biggest difference, the fat, you know, the most results come from a brand new fly line. Yeah. You can fish Changing the same rod with two different lines. You'll think it's a different rod. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I think it's more important, like on a high end rod, if you had a high end rod with a crappy line versus a mid range rod with a high end line, the high end line is always going to. That's where you'll, better. you'll feel yeah, that performance yeah. is much more apparent to you with yeah. the visual, like, Oh, look, my line did this versus, yeah. Oh, crumpled yeah. and fluffed this cast. So I remember yeah. there was a guy at, I, he's he was just really skeptical and I'm like, yeah, I, I fish this. It's, it's great. I said, I guarantee you'll love it. So he, he goes out, he called me from the river. He's like, Oh man, I had no idea. I'm like, yeah, the line you gave me was just peeling off the core. I said, this is going to make it feel like you have a thousand dollar rod. So yeah, I appreciate the calls from the river, but go freaking fish. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have used up all of our time. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. AJ. Come see us at the new shop and location up in Idaho Falls. Yep. Fly fish food. Jimmy's will be stocked and ready for you for all your Henry's Lake, South Fork. Yeah. If anybody like East if you guys Idaho, are looking to South make South Montana uh, kind of stuff, we, we got it all. Yeah. We'll hook you up. We'll t tell you some of the floats you could do, uh, guide services we work with. We don't guide, uh, directly, but we'll work with some of the ones around and can dial you in. I mean, it's a great, if you're thinking about places you want to go, uh, come visit us up in Idaho. There's we tell great like, jokes up there, and you yeah. know we're funnier than the Utah store. I I associate with Jimmy's. <laughs> the management okay. there's much better. The management and there's way better. Way better head on the shoulders up there for management. Yeah, so we're, we're not we're just good. Euro nymphing snobs the whole time. You know <laughs> it's throw foam or go home. Throw right? foam or go home and frig off you Utahns. Okay, <laughs> all right. I think we'll just leave them with that, right? Yeah. All right. Peace. <laughs>